about Christmas that just provokes stories. You know, I'm sure along the way, some of the older folks have shared with the younger kids stories about what Christmas was like in the earlier years of their lives. And there are countless stories. You know, I'm amazed that Hallmark can come up with so many different movies <laughs> that are all Christmas stories, you know? But there's something about Christmas that does that. It's almost mystical. I want to share with you a Christmas story, but it's not mystical. It's one that, you know, is, is a part of my life, and I've reflected on that more than a few times over the years. It's a tale of two shirts, or the two-shirt tail. Back years ago, when I was younger, my aunt and uncle, Crazy George and Lucky Ruth, <laughs> he was always called Crazy George from the time he was a little kid, but she only became Lucky Ruth on the day they were married, which tells you something about why they considered my uncle crazy. <laughs> but in any case, Crazy George and Lucky Ruth gave me this shirt, and I remember the shirt really well. It was a cream-colored shirt, and it had a brown piping down the front where the buttons go and around the collar. And I thanked them when I opened the gift, and then I did what my parents always required, and that is I wrote the thank you note and did that, and then put the shirt in the bottom drawer of my dresser. <laughs> And there it stayed. It never saw the light of day again until I gave it to St. Vincent de Paul <laughs> with all of the 17,632 pins in place holding it all together. You know how that is. Yeah. I didn't like the shirt, and I never wore it. And I always think, you know, what an ungrateful little kid. And then in ninth grade, I remember my parents gave me a shirt. It was a broadcloth Oxford shirt. It was light green, and it had button-down collars and green pinstripes. And it must have been that somebody, when I wore it, said, you know, Dave, you look good in that. Well, you know what happens when somebody says that to you. <laughs> kind of stand a little taller, you know? And so I wore that shirt. Every time my wash was done, it was in the wash. I wore it all through high school. I wore it all through college, and when the, knees, the, the elbows finally wore out, I cut the sleeves off and made it a short sleeve shirt and continued to wear it into graduate school. I loved that shirt. You know, and it was something that was just a part of my regular wardrobe. And then one day, I was folding the shirt. I was in graduate school at St. John's Seminary in Plymouth. And I had a, a room on the east side of the building. And so on a really clear day, I could see the city of Detroit. I could see at night the lights on the bridge from my room because the seminary was built on the highest point in Wayne County. And I was folding the shirt. And I happened to notice as I was folding it, I held it up and I could see the city of Detroit. <laughs> And I said, you know, maybe it's finally seen its day. And so I cut it up and used it for rags and washed the windows. You know, and that's what I mean about the tale of two shirts. One I really liked and the other not so much. And I say that because I'm always fond of the imagery that St. Paul uses. He uses it in his letter to the Galatians, his, one of his first letters in his letter to the Colossians, and even again in the letter to the Ephesians. He has this image, he says, to put on Christ. And in Colossians, he not only talks about putting on Christ, but he says that when we put on Christ, what comes with it is a whole lot of stuff. You know, St. Paul tells us that we can dress up and have the layered look. Because he says, put on compassion and kindness and forbearance, and humility, and gentleness, and, and, and um, over forgiveness, and over all of these put on love. Somehow there is this imagery of Christ as being like clothing. And Paul uses that in three different letters. 
And I think of that in relationship to those shirts. You know, tonight, you and I gather to celebrate the gift of a Savior. We hear again the story of one born 2,000 years ago, how he came first into this world. And during Advent, we listen to stories about how we will come again in glory at the end. But the truth is, my sisters and brothers, the reason why we are here tonight is because he comes to us tonight. He comes to us in his word, and more importantly, in the gift of his body that he comes to dwell within us, to be one with us. That's the great gift. The question is, what are we going to do with this gift? Will we put it in the drawer and wait until maybe sometime when we're desperate and really need that and pull it out? Or will we wear that gift every day? Will we make him a part of us so that every day you and I who are Christians can dress in the very love of Christ, to do it in a way that brings that love, that life, that hope, that promise to a waiting world. You and I gather to celebrate a gift, and the question is, what are we going to do? Oh, it's nice to say thank you to God for the gift, but the important thing is that it becomes a part of us, and it is in that that the promise of Christmas is fulfilled. I'm going to end with a little poem that I encountered in preparing for the homily today. It's a simple one, and it, we don't know who the author was, but that's okay. It begins by saying, When the song of the angels is still, when the shepherds have returned to their flock, when the star in the sky is gone, when kings and princes have gone home, then the work of Christmas begins to find the lost, to heal the brokenhearted, to feed the hungry, to release the prisoners, to bring peace to all, and to make music with the heart. I wish you the blessing of Christmas and the hope that the gift that we're given will wear well. It will never wear out, I guarantee that.